This is Collins and Zhu, the podcast, episode 448 for the week of July 1st, 2018. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Cons and Shoe, the podcast, an extension of the all-encompassing Dragon Ball fan site, Shoe.com. We cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening. I should say Dragon Ball Heroes in hopes of enlightening and a little bit of entertaining. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, trying to stick with this weekly schedule. I think I think we can accomplish it. We can do this. It's a it's a bold new year here in 2018 as we're half officially halfway through the year. Uh, my name is Mike Vegito Ex. Aren't we supposed to do a half year prediction check in this week? Oh, well, there was a new um. thing. <laughs> I guess we have to do this instead. Uh, joining me, let's start with Julian. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Um, good. I'm in the midst of uh, organizing the house and packing for Japan because my wife and children are going to be over here for a month in a week and a half. So I'm going over there. I was going to say, wait, if they're coming here, you're going to leave while they're coming over here? How's that work? No, I'm going over there to get them. Gotcha. So I'm literally... I'm going to get to my house in Japan, sleep, and the next day I'm going to go back on the plane in the other direction with my wife and children. Oh my God, you're going to be a monster for a couple of days there. All right, then moving I was on. thinking more of a zombie myself. <laughs> but uh, We also have Jake Herms. How are you, sir? Hello. It's been a busy couple of days for you, hasn't it, Ben? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> we are here to talk about the Super Dragon Ball Heroes promotional anime. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be one of our easiest reviews ever because the, the content is all of eight minutes. Uh, but we're going to do uh, something a, a little different, a little special to set things up. Uh, Dragon Ball Heroes, here we are in 2018. Maybe people haven't been keeping up with it, don't actually know what Dragon Ball Heroes is. Uh, the story behind Dragon Dragon Ball Heroes has continued to uh, expand and evolve. It's not just an arcade game anymore. So we're going to give you a little bit of background on what it is and some of the other products out there and how that all ties together and, and has formed this new Super Dragon Ball Heroes universe mission prison planet arc promotional <laughs> anime uh that's what's on tap this episode we're gonna review it and talk about heroes a little bit uh there's so much to cover here so we're just gonna get right into it let's go super dragon ball heroes promo anime let's actually start <laughs> further back than even dragon ball heroes uh so there have been many 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 card-based arcade games. Julian, maybe you can speak to this as someone who's looked through many a V-Jump yes. issue in your long history here. Uh, the Cardas the series extends so far back, and, and it's evolved from right. actual cards to arcade games. Right. So the early Cardas games, they were physical cards. Obviously, they're still physical cards. But what I mean is they had like like little barcodes on them that you could use and um you collect them over time there were different sets of them that came out um even i think even while gt was on the air before it eventually petered out but right. over time there's been different series of card games um uh, back during when i was in college there was one that i've seen a little bit about and i don't remember what it was called is that Bakuretsu Impact or is that a little later? Well, that's when we start getting into arcades. And let's just jump ahead there right. because that's when things get a little interesting. Uh, people think about Heroes. Oh, that's when everything changed. Not entirely. Uh, what we know is Dragon Ball Heroes really existed as is uh, under different names before that. We had Bakuretsu Impact. Uh, there was an update to it. There's a W, which is double. And I don't remember if it's Bakuretsu Impact W or W Bakuretsu Impact, something like that. Uh, so it, it had some updates uh, that transitioned into Dragon Battlers, and I think that had uh, an update to it as well. And Dragon Battlers is really where they started testing the waters with the fan service, uh, the new what ifs. Uh, Dragon Battlers is actually where we first got Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta, and Broly, uh, even prior to their inclusion in the Raging Blast games on home video game consoles. Uh, that was really their, their test ground for it. Uh, they decided, well, this is what we should be doing, and they went whole hog into Dragon Ball Heroes, and that started in 2010. Then, Julian, why don't you tell us a little bit about Dragon Ball Heroes, because then they transitioned to that, and that got tons of updates, but this is the one they stuck with yes so uh dragon ball heroes was this uh series of card-based arcade games that started coming out in 2010 while kai was on the air now this has a new game system where in the cards have these um specific 
uh, I can't remember if there there's like a chip in them or if they have like a specific pattern mag magnetically on the inside. But if you put them on this um, sensitized playing field at the arcade, um, you can move them around to perform special moves and have the characters do them on the screen. So it's it's very much your basic you know turn based uh, card game, but it's got this added element of of uh, seeing the characters play out the moves in front of you. And there's whole techniques involved in combining the stats of different cards and doing things like fusions and special moves and all that fun stuff. And it just gets more and more complex over time. And I guess and to, to a certain extent, it's like amiibos, but with cards. Yeah, it is. You put them on the field and you have, what is it, five rows on your side. Uh, the further up you put them, the higher your attack power. And, and then you can kind of pull them back to build up your power again. Yeah, we even have amiibo cards now. So it's probably the same as a near field technology. It's probably the same underlying technology underneath there. So then we have Dragon Ball Heroes as an entity. It's, it's going great, <laughs> as we've talked about. Uh, Dragon Ball Heroes is clearly where the money has been over the years. Uh, but Dragon Ball Heroes continues to get a series of updates. So think of the base Dragon Ball Heroes as like the 1.0 series. It gets uh, its next update thing that's like 1.1, 1.2. Uh, but then we get to think of it as like an entirely new, it's like the next story arc sort of within Dragon Ball Heroes. So we had the Galaxy Mission series. We had uh, the Evil Dragon story arc. We had the God Mission series. This would be like the 2.0 series, the 3.0 series, and so on. Uh, and that built all the way up to Super Dragon Ball Heroes in 2016. And we're actually on the next update series within Super Dragon Ball Heroes. This is the universe mission series yes now it's worth noting that these were sort of uh rolled out like clockwork about every two months yeah yeah <clears throat> so each uh individual update would come over every two months or so and then about every two years they'd have a new story arc or uh, a new i guess you could say gameplay upgrade in terms of the things that they introduce yeah, yeah. when they introduced super dragon ball heroes it was like the the big hardware update in terms of yeah. um, bringing everything that started not eight years ago now into, well, I guess the 21st century is a given for both, but uh, into uh, 2018 standards. For those of you who follow along with the, the home console games, uh, it effectively runs on the same game engine as Dimps' Budokai series from the PlayStation 2. Uh, and even the hardware upgrades, like, oh, it just looks like a, a slightly better <laughs> PS2 game here in 2018. Uh, that's your arcade game. Jake, uh, I know you and I have played a bit of the Nintendo 3DS ports. Uh, let's mention these real quick. Uh, the arcade game has never left Japan. The 3DS games have never left Japan. But this is a way that people, you know, if you can import them and play them, uh, this is a way to sort of play Dragon Ball Heroes. Yeah, and essentially it's the same basic system as the arcade game, except all of the cards are just digital and on your 3DS. And so, and with kind of, you know, just downgraded 3DS graphics. And yeah, so I played the first or second one of those when it came out a few years back. Right. And um, yeah, played it to the point where I got really sick of it. <laughs> you and me And both. then <laughs> that's... That's sort of been my major involvement with Heroes until now. <laughs> yeah, I think you played uh, like a bit of the first one into the second one. And then I kind of picked up where I played uh, a good amount of the second one and then into Ultimate Mission X. Uh, so the first one came out in 2013. Ultimate Mission 2 came out in 2014. They actually supported that one for a few years. They kept rolling updates to that one to sort of keep up with some of the ongoing cards. Um, and then that culminated in 2017 with Ultimate Mission X, which in encompass the entire base level uh, Dragon Ball Hero series. So everything pre-Super Dragon Ball Heroes is in that game. And I think since then, they've actually added a couple super cards into it. But uh, that's the most recent one. Uh, so that's the actual games. But we need to talk about Dragon Ball Heroes has expanded beyond uh, just the games. And I swear we're getting to the promotional anime. But uh, to get to the promo anime, you actually have to understand everything that went into it uh, before then. Julian, give me a little bit of background. Toyotaro, uh, he truly started under the name Toyotaro with Dragon Ball Heroes. That's right. So this was back in 2012 in V-Jump. He started out doing just these short couple of pages comics that were, you know, just transparently promotional material for whatever was going on. I mean, that first chapter is literally two pages. Right. And it's 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 literally just whatever is currently the thing. Here's in... Baby Janemba on a page. Anyway, buy cards. Yes. 
But over time, it sort of developed its own ongoing story, and they kept increasing the page count and you, until it was regularly pulling, like, almost 30 pages. Yeah, yeah. It went on for a good, what, 28, 29 chapters? Yeah, it's uh, 28 regular chapters. Uh, then it went on hiatus. Uh, <laughs> and there were a couple of bonus things here and there. Like there was uh, an away mission chapter in V-Jump and all the stuff in the Jump Festa, some bonus chapters there. Uh, he got a final 29th chapter in the Dragon Ball Heroes 5th Anniversary Guidebook. And that kind of brings Beat's story to a close. Not really, because it's they leave on <laughs> like this giant climax of a battle. But that kind of wraps up. And the adventure up. continues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it, it's kind of, um, I mean, it, it's transparently promotional material, as as is the thing that we are here to talk about. But it got him his start in the franchise. Yeah. Properly. And the thing with Victory Mission is it's it's aware that Dragon Ball Heroes is a card game. Like the character of Beat and his friends, they are, quote unquote, real people who then enter into this universe with their cards. Right. So... Ostensibly, at least initially, they are playing the card game, and what we see playing out is what's on the screen right. of the game. And later on, it becomes more complicated with <laughs> them getting trapped into the game itself. But yeah. anyway. So it's sort of like Yu-Gi-Oh! in that regard. Yeah, there's I a suppose. lot of apt comparisons there, for sure. And I guess maybe we should also mention that the Victory Mission uh, was the series that got referenced in uh, Dragon Ball AF. Yes. Uh, are you talking about like his uh, wrap up kind of closing message there? Yeah, where he says where he more or less hinted at the reason why he couldn't continue the uh, the reason Toy Ball couldn't continue the Dragon Ball F uh, Dragon Ball AF fan manga was, was because he was busy doing some other unspecified thing. And then in that panel, there was the silhouette of beat. Right. <laughs> he was very obvious. And that was uh, the only kind of like printed message uh, sort of acknowledging that Toy Bull and Toyotaro are the same person. Uh, as he's come over to the States and gone international, people have gotten, I don't want to say people have gotten confessions out of him, but <laughs> it's, it's very much a, a fact at this point. Uh, Julian, I want to stick with you a little bit because Psycho Jump just makes things <laughs> so difficult here. Before we get to Nakayama's kind of like real story, can you attempt to explain what the Charisma Mission series is? Okay, so in the pages of V Jump and in Psycho Jump and somewhat outside of them, like at these uh, officially sanctioned Dragon Ball Heroes tournaments, there are these characters who are basically mascots, I guess you could say, and they, they change over every few years. But at the time that this particular um, series started, it was Engineer Yoshito who... At least his character's story, I'm not sure if he's actually, like, uh, we were talking about, uh, oh, what was it, Suzuki, who was, yeah, yeah. Um, who became a mascot right. during uh, the Super Comic Con days. Right, producer became a mascot, yeah. Yes, so he may, in fact, work at R&D in Bond, at Bandai Namco, as his story suggests, or he may just be a character. But then you have the, the battle navigators, and also self-proclaimed battle princess Momo. And basically, it was like these, in, in terms of the comic itself, even though they were also portrayed by actors in actual events. Right. Um, but they basically play the game and show how to do the various techniques in the game with various dumb gags and reaction faces. And yeah, it's like that's pretty much all it was at the time. It's slapstick promo on top of the other promo. Like it's the most transparent and obvious promotion. It's, Hey, here's the new cards and ah, we're wacky faces. And it's usually only, you know, three or four pages, something like that. And it usually accompanies something else, but charisma mission has come and gone depending on what else Nagiyama's uh, working on. Now we're, we're into ultimate charisma mission. And it's usually just the couple pages after, uh, the actual story that you see, you're like, what are these weird drawings that's still by the same author? That's what Charisma Mission is. But then Nagayama had uh, a real story, uh, the Dark Demon Realm mission series for Super Dragon Ball Heroes that ran for 10 chapters in Psycho Jump. Now, as opposed to Victory Mission, Dark Demon Realm mission was uh, effectively in universe. Like there's not actual 
uh, avatar characters with cards playing them. It appears as if, like you're going to see in this promo anime, like this is the story of these characters um, that, that's being played out here. Uh, Dark Demon Realm Mission, we had Kronoa, the uh, Kaioshin of Time. We had Demigra in there. Uh, we had a new series of uh, demons and gods, all that going on. Uh, that ran Again, that ran for 10 chapters, had a bonus chapter. It's been collected into two volumes. Yes, I, I own those two volumes. And I do I, too. <laughs> uh, fl- I, flipped, I flipped through them. And uh, that's it. <laughs> I uh, I scan them and I document everything every two months and they're still just sitting there. Uh, th- there's a lot of plans for this manga section on the website. I swear to God, Someday, we're getting to it. <laughs> eventually. Author comments. They're, they're not, I, I get they're everything. not a high priority. No. Uh, so that ran for its 10 chapters. Uh, and then the next thing, we're only two chapters into it right now uh, in Psycho Jump. This is the Universe Mission series, and it's effectively a sequel to Dark Demon Realm Mission. Uh, and what you're seeing in the Universe Mission manga is this new story arc. It's the Prison Planet story arc. So we have Few, uh, we have Kula, we have the Prison Planet, we have uh, the Xeno version of Goku, the Time Patroller, uh, so Super Saiyan 4 versus Super Saiyan Blue. Uh, it's effectively the same story. Now, what you see in the manga is not necessarily going to be exactly what you see uh, in this promotional anime. In many ways, you can think of it as what Toyotara's version of the Dragon Ball Super manga was to the uh, TV version of Dragon Ball Super, where there's this underlying series of, all right, these are the characters we're using right now. These are the locations we're using. These are the transformations. These are the loose connected plot points that we want to get to have at it. Um, so you're probably going to see some differences between the two. Uh, but I think it's important to note that there's this thing going on over here while this is going on over here. And uh, they're, they're related, but they're not necessarily uh, going to be one for one adaptations of each other. That gets us to the first uh, truly like weird side product of Dragon Ball animation. Yeah, we've had movies. Yeah, we've had OVAs. Yeah, we've had TV specials. But uh, this is a this is an entirely different ballpark on the other side of the planet. Somehow, uh, the a promotional <laughs> anime for Super Dragon Ball Heroes running in at about eight minutes, including <laughs> an opening animation and ending credits. Uh, this started streaming on um, the Dragon Ball Heroes official website and YouTube channel, uh, whereas the (laughs) promo trailer was not region locked. The episode itself is, in fact, region locked, which makes sense because Dragon Ball Heroes is only in Japan. Uh, So this is promotion for stuff that unless you're importing 3DS games, you you really can't do a whole lot with. Uh, Let's just get right into it. We could recap the episode, but I mean, it's like eight minutes long. Um, <laughs> Jake, why don't you give us like the quickest version of this story? Well, if if you've seen the episode title, then you've seen the episode, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but so Goku and Vegeta are sparring with Whis, pretty much like at the start of Resurrection F. Yeah, yeah. And then Mai, and they're you know they're on Beerus's planet, and so Mai, the future Mai from the future Trunks arc, comes up, tells them Trunks is gone, and then. So Few comes out of nowhere and says that Trunks has, in fact, been taken to the prison planet. And so they basically got to go rescue him. So Goku, Vegeta and Mai teleport to the prison planet. And then uh, pretty much immediately they are attacked by Goku Zeno, who we learn is a version of Goku from an alternate universe who works for the Time Patrol, which means that he essentially goes after crim- like interdimensional criminals. Right. And so... Goku Zeno can become Super Saiyan 4, and he uh, at first thinks that regular Goku is in league with Few. So they, you know, regular Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue, and they fight each other for not very long. <laughs> I would say all of five seconds. Yeah, and it accumulates in them uh, firing Kamehameha's at each other and Clash Elian. Uh, before this happens, a regular Goku, he kind of hits an invisible barrier in the sky so it turns out now that they're on the prison planet, appropriately enough, they're trapped there by this invisible barrier. And Few also appears and kind of explains this about the planet. And so this is when they've clashed their Kamehameha's together. And it turns out Few reveals like he's figured out that Goku Zeno had kind of hatched this plan in his mind to use this beam clash to try and break out from the barrier. But apparently that 
it's not good enough. Right. So the only the only actual way they can get out of this planet is by gathering seven special Dragon Balls, which Goku Zeno has one, and then the others are all in the hands of different uh, prisoners. And so essentially, that's the scenario: is they have to find Trunks, get the Dragon Balls, and then get off the planet. And so Few takes off back to his you know, some kind of control room, and then. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, Trunks wakes up in his cell and wanders out. Oh, wait, he's not but, locked. But hold on. So Trunks wakes up. He wakes up. The doors open, and he's just in the middle of a city. Yeah, for some. I don't know. Oh yeah, and also, so Few has also revealed that this he is the one who created this planet so that he could gather people from throughout time and space and have them fight each other just for his own amusement and bizarre experiments. I guess. Right. Right. So he's he's writing his own personal fan fiction on a grand scale. <laughs> and anyway, so Trunks has wandered out and he runs into Kula, who demands he hand over Trunks hand over the Dragon Ball. But Trunks doesn't seem to know what the heck he's talking about. And then cut to few in his kind of control room monitoring things. And he's like, ah, yes, finally, I can b- begin my grand experiment. And then there's this uh, guy locked up basically in a Bane type outfit. Mm hmm. And so Few says, ah, your turn will come a little later, evil scion. End episode. Yep. That's kind of it. Where I want to start is actually uh, the very end there, uh, pointing out who we see on the TV screens. Uh, And this is similar to what we see uh, at the end of the first uh, Universe Mission manga chapter by Nagayama. Uh, We see King Cold there. Uh, King Cold, Frieza and Kula's by extension father from the original series. Uh, We see Bojack, who's uh, the main antagonist from Dragon Ball Z Movie 9. We also see Ozoto, the final boss from the 1994 Sega arcade-only video game Dragon Ball Z VR VS Virtual Reality Versus, uh, a first-person game where uh, you fight against other Dragon Ball characters. And the final boss is Majin Ozoto, or Ozoto the Super Monster, as it is translated there in the English version. Uh, He's effectively Shang Tsung. He just uh, transforms into other characters. Uh, Ozoto, finally back. Uh, I actually just re-listened to this. Uh, Randy and I reviewed the original, the real Dragon Ball Z Legends, uh, Idainuru Dragon Ball Tensetsu from PlayStation Saturn. Uh, We learned from the text files there, Jake, you translated some of this. Uh, This is another one I want to get us back to at some point uh ozoto was originally planned to be in the old ps1 saturn legends game uh, but they just couldn't make it so here we are in 2018 ozoto is finally making a return to the dragon ball franchise so it seems like these are going to be some of the characters that have these special dragon balls for them to get uh just wanted to point out some some cool characters we have coming our way has Azoto really not been in the the Heroes card game before now? Nope, nothing. Not, wow, not a peep from Ozoto since 1994. So, who do you think is going to get who this character is, or do you think they're going to explain it at some point? Oh, uh, I I don't think they're really going to explain it. At all. I mean, how do you explain it? Like, you were from an arcade game, but we're in an arcade game, but we're not supposed to know we're in an arcade game. Like. I don't know how you really explain a character like that. I well, think, I mean, what about like in V Jump or something? Um, Does Ozoto have a backstory in the original arcade game? I don't remember. I feel like you just kind of get to him and then that's it. Um, there's not a whole lot to him. And I mean, even in this episode when Goku Zeno shows up, like the explanation of who this other Goku is is like one sentence long. Yeah, from another. You're that place, another dimension. Yeah, they're they're not doing anything to explain, oh, this is Super Saiyan 4, this is Super Saiyan Blue. I mean, you're just left to know as the audience member. Uh, And I guess that's how we need to frame this is this is truly, in every sense of the phrase, a promotional anime. They are not wasting their time on uh, trivial things like writing (laughs) in this. You're just uh, expected to know things because you're a Dragon Ball fan and, and you've seen all this kind of stuff before. Yeah. And I guess on that note should say, they don't say, they don't say the name Goku Zeno out loud in the episode, but it is in the end credits. Yeah. And that's the name that's been attributed to all the various time patrol characters in the games. Like there's Goten Zeno. There's, (laughs) they're all versions of these characters from some alternate dimension and should clarify. This is completely unrelated to Zen. O. 
right. the lord of everything. Like this is Zeno as in like alien from Greek, like xenomorph. Mm-hmm. So it's a way of it's a fancy way of saying another dimension. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess mm-hmm. further by extension there, we can even say like this isn't even necessarily the exact Goku from the exact Dragon Ball GT that you've seen. Uh, they're not necessarily saying the Goku that we see at the end of Dragon Ball GT episode 64 has gone off to be a time patroller. Like just how we have various incarnations of Goku in the TV series and Goku in the movies. And there's lots of characters out there doing lots of different things and they're just plucking what they need to tell the story that they want to tell. Uh, and that's my roundabout way of answering the, uh, is this a piece of artillery question? Right. It's, it's like how all the movie character movie villains can exist in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Again, the devil's corpse would probably know better, but I believe that, in the Heroes card game, at least, there's explicitly, there's GT Goku and then Goku Zeno, and they're different characters yep. as far as the game is concerned. Yeah, they, they've shown them all side by side. Uh, I, I feel like I remember uh, an early thing, Ultimate Mission X, where uh, they just flat out show you, like, here are all the different Gokus. And yeah, they're, they're different ones there. I guess, so that's the story, and I don't know how much more we can say about the writing. Is it, It's so short, and it's just, here's some characters go <laughs> they don't feel the need to explain anything is there anything else you guys want to say about it in that regard uh okay i have two points I mean, okay. okay first off i i kept saying like oh regular goku in contrast to goku zero sure. but like even even that goku the one who's like training at beerus's place who seems more or less similar to the goku from super mm-hmm. like he has you know for no reason that i know of he has the capsule corp logo on his uh uniform mm-hmm. So like he's even he isn't really the Goku we've seen in the main series. So it's all, you know, it's they're kind of intentionally s- splitting this off from Super yeah, itself yeah. without actually explain giving any detailed explanations of like the history of this alternate version of the series. Right. And okay, and I guess the other main thing is that the whole the writing such as it is uh, such as it is of this thing, like it has a really for me a really strong like old school American comics vibe Mm, where it's like whenever superheroes, like whenever they have a crossover issue, like they're meet and then they're misunderstand each other and fight for a bit. And then once they realize there's a misunderstanding, then they're stopped fighting. Right. Right. It all has that kind of Mm. feel to it. I I think that's a really great description because it reminds me of things like, you know, my wife is big into X-Men, the Marvel universe. Um, So I know very well uh, something like Astonishing X-Men. It's like, all right, this is it's the first volume of this story. It's like, yeah, well, you're you're expected to know not not even just who Wolverine is. You're expected to know Jean Grey is dead. Scott is with Emma now. Like there's all this back history you're supposed to know, just like in here where you're supposed to know. All right. Goku can go Super Saiyan Blue. He's training with Beerus. You're supposed to know that Dragon Ball GT exists. Uh, It feels like uh, I think that's such a great description. Like this is giant. Dragon Ball Super number one <laughs> comic release two ninety five over here. <laughs> yes, everything that has occurred in the past, even if it's contradictory, all exists now in the same place. Right, and I guess also on that note, if we want to venture into power scaling for a bit, like the fact that the two Gokus are, as near as we can tell, basically even, has that's like the same thing with American comic books, where whenever the heroes fight, they're basically even for the extent of that fight, and then <laughs> right, maybe in other issues they have like vastly different powers, but. You know, it's like they're even because otherwise it would be a boring episode. <laughs> Although it's kind of even even with them being equally say, matched, it's, it's a boring <laughs> fight anyway. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. I, I don't know what people are expecting. I mean, I, I guess we kind of know that baby Goku is going to go a little crazy berserk at some point. But it's a Goku. He's going to be good. And they're not truly going to fight against each other. They're going to be best buds. All right. So that was the writing of this episode. Uh, I guess let's talk about the art a little bit. This is a. Uh, this is certainly a thing. Uh, it, it looks effectively like Dragon Ball Super. I, I think we were all correct in thinking, all right, if we're going to have Shintani over on uh, the new movie, where does that leave Yamamuro? That leaves Yamamuro doing everything that he had been doing up to this point, which is uh, supervising and working on Dragon Ball Heroes animation. This looks certainly like quintessential Yamamuro work, doesn't it? I think quintessential is the nicest term for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that being said, I, there's, there's some plenty fine drawings in this. Uh, it, it doesn't move particularly well, but uh, I think about that that one pan up shot in Goku Zeno. That looks great. Looks fine. I just downgraded from great to fine, but whatever. <laughs> yes, I, I think the problem with uh, Yamamuro is not so much his drawings themselves, but making them move. 
they just don't particularly move all that well very stiff yeah to be fair this is an eight minute promotional anime uh were we really expecting OVA quality on something like this? I mean, this isn't going out to a wider audience. Uh, anyone outside Japan watching it is doing so through like proxy services and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised this exists. Maybe let's talk about uh, how every update series and every individual mission update to Dragon Ball Heroes, they do get animated intros in the arcade game. So we've seen some of this actual stuff before uh goku Zeno and super saiyan 4 versus him uh we've seen few show up uh, but then we also get the the avatar characters going super saiyan blue and jumping in all that uh this seems like an extension of this uh julian do you think this is the thing that bandai wanted to do <laughs> back in 2008 2009 uh, i think it's quite possible although um i think we were probably better off with kai maybe Maybe it, it, it's so hard to say anything critical or otherwise about it, because more so than a TV series where it's all right, the TV series that's going to be distributed, it's going to be simulcast and it's going to be available for purchase in multiple languages on different video format. Like this is just an, an eight minute streaming thing. I, I find it hard to find anything to really say about it from a writing perspective from a an overall production perspective it, it's just kind of a, a realistic description you have the uh the review the universe uh, survival arc review with kaiser neko mm-hmm. and on that he was like you know, you know he's watching the universe survival arc it's like oh, I, I i suddenly realized this is all just a big toy commercial and like do you think that's more or do you think that's more true of this uh, do you think we're hypocrites for being like kind of like oh this is just a I don't know. <laughs> do you think there's a great difference between <laughs> this and Super? I I think so uh, because something like Dragon Ball Super and you want to tie it back to multiple conversations we've had over multiple podcasts. I uh, think about what I was talking about with Rich recently uh, with regard to Toyotaro, kind of holding up the legacy of Toriyama's writing style and craftsmanship. Dragon Ball Super is that that that's extending that legacy into a a piece of true artwork, uh, even if it is just a transparent toy commercial. Uh, Something like this is not doing that. This is very much, uh, I mean, it's in the title. It's a promotional anime. They're they're not, they're not, I don't know how to, (laughs) I don't know what the metaphor I'm looking for is, but they're not hiding behind any guise of artwork here. It literally is just an extended commercial. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I do, I do feel there's a difference. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I'm lying to myself or not, but I do right. feel like there's <laughs> a difference. Yeah, what do you think, Julian? Well, I, I think that because it's so closely linked to this game, there's no real way around it. Yeah. At least for the series itself, they can at least say, well, they're, you know, they're doing the story, et cetera, et cetera. But here it's just like, yeah, this is a promotion for the thing. It's in the name. It's a promotional anime. Yeah, yeah. So some people like, where it's saying like before this came out, it's like, well, is this how does is this the same thing as the Pokemon anime, which is also which started out as a, you know just a right way of promoting the games, but well, for one thing, as far as I know, I don't think the with Pokemon that it's called a promotional anime. No, it's just a standard TV series. But I mean, as much as everything is an an actual product to sell, like the TV series is a commercial for the games, which themselves are commercials for you know the extended batch of merchandise. I mean, everything is made to promote and sell other things. I don't know. It's a really tough relationship because something like Dragon Ball has always had just the mainline series and sure there was dragon ball gt and then they kind of ignored that for a while and and then made dragon ball super and this is kind of just i hate to use the word over and over but just so transparently picking and choosing everything they want to use like so here we have dragon ball gt here we have dragon ball super here we have dragon ball online in the form of few they're just uh desecrating the corpse of anything they can find along the way. They're the, the main office there. Um, I feel like it's very much its own distinct, different thing, uh, especially because we don't know how long this is going to run for, uh, how big of a production is going to be. As of right now, we know it's going to have two episodes. <laughs> Episode two is going to be right. <laughs> on uh, July 16th. It'll, it'll be streaming. Um, but it, it's hard to... I mean, we've already spent this much time talking about it. I feel like the majority of the time was just setting it up. But even still, we spent this much time talking about it to say, yeah, there it is. 
Yeah. And I mean, I guess I assume at bare minimum there'd be, you know, they've got to gather seven Dragon Balls and it probably won't be more than one Dragon Ball per episode. I was gonna say, you're going to have uh, one villain per episode. That, that makes sense. Right. And we know we're going to get to Vegito Zeno seemingly <laughs> along the way. Uh, we we got to get up to Cumber at some point, the evil scion. Uh, we're we're going to see Uzoto at some point. I mean, there's a lot of characters to see. Uh, so we're probably looking at at least like 10 episodes, right? Right. Well, of course, the end game is that you need to have uh, Goku Zeno and Goku Fuse. So you could get Super Saiyan 4 Blue Gokaroto. <laughs> Gokaroto. Is that what we're calling it? I guess. Yeah, they might say that for next season. Yeah. Oh. And I guess uh, getting it back to it being called a promotional anime, yeah, I mean, yeah. the reason we call, call it that is because that's the term they use in all of the material related to this. They keep saying a promotional anime. And I assume I assume the contrast there is that, you know, the term they like with Super, they called it a TV anime because it aired on TV. Mm-hmm. So like, I assume part of the reason why they keep calling this a promotional anime is to, you know, help to specify that it's not going to air on TV. And, and I think part of it is also just setting expectations. Like this is just this thing over here. This is not the new main flagship product for Dragon Ball. This is super is over. New movie is coming later this year. We definitely want to keep Dragon Ball in the public mind as much as possible. In the meantime, here's this promotional anime. I, I feel like that makes so much sense. I mean, I don't think we're being mean and treating this as a bit lesser than like Super itself or this new movie. Like, I think they they themselves putting it out have branded it like that. Yeah, you say that, but I've already built out an entire episode guide for the website for it. <laughs> so, like we're treating it, at least from our perspective, we're treating it the same. I mean, you're doing the, the full summaries and Heath is translating the credits and all that jazz. So I mean, we're treating it as we would any other thing. Well, that's that's the problem when the motto is everything and anything Dragon Ball. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, is there anything else to say about uh, the music? We have yet another new composer here. We have Yuya Mori. Uh, I feel like I don't have much to say about it because it's so short. It's like trying to talk about the music and plan to eradicate the super science or episode of Bardock. I mean, this is even shorter than that. Like, okay, there, yep, there were two pieces of music I remember. Okay. What do we think about the opening song? Uh, isn't it just the most recent universe mission opening? Yeah, I guess so. I don't think know. It, it's a thing. Uh, it's they're they're keeping uh, what's his face? Uh, the Dragon Soul singer group. Um, Ta- Takayoshi um, Tanimoto is that his name? Yeah. Too and many it's, Takitana Tado names. Yeah, it's also the the guitarist who also played um uh in the song Dragon Soul. I think I think he co-wrote it. And there's the there's the lady. Oh, what something Gojo? I think he also sings uh, in some of the more recent themes. Mm. I want to say Mayumi Gojo, but that might be my misremembering. It, you can tell how low on on my radar this is. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it just sounds like Tanimoto doing what he's been doing, uh, sticking around with the franchise. There, uh, I really don't have anything else to say. It, it's a it's a new introduction to it. Uh, to me, it feels like a little bit of a retread because I just read two chapters in the first chapter of Universe Mission from uh, Yoshitaka Nagayama. It's literally this exact same story. And so I'm, I'm really curious to see um, how these will continue to differ as they go on, especially because the promo anime, I mean, is it going to be roughly a two week schedule? We, we have no idea versus Psycho Jump, which is every other month. So there's a lot to cover over there, especially if they can cover one episode in one chapter there. Uh, that's going to, it's going to feel very different. What else you guys want to say about this? I mean, do you think they try and have this wrap up right bef- right around December? That sure makes a whole lot of sense, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because yeah, it would... seems like that should that work out. Yeah. If I were a betting man, I'd say that'd probably be likely. That's perfect. Like I said, just uh, keep Dragon Ball something for it, just constantly produced in, in the public consciousness until they can get to their next flagship thing, which is going to be the super movie in December. Yeah. It was a thing. I watched it. I I was It was fine. I, I I was kind of surprised at how fine it was. I don't know. I'd watch another one. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't awful. It wasn't great. It was a thing. Do you think we already had our expectations set because we all have been following <laughs> Dragon Ball Heroes and have even played Dragon Ball Heroes before, so we knew exactly what we were getting into here? I think more or less. I mean, watching social media and like the really excited reactions to this 
I was just thinking, oh, please don't, please don't get their expectations <laughs> that high. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's also cute and quaint at the same time. Like, oh, you have no idea that that's actually really cool that you have no idea what this is. Uh, I remember what it was like to, to not just buy every magazine the day it comes out and, and know everything. I, it, I talk often about it, but I, I truly wish that I could go back to a time when I didn't know as much as I did about the series. I, I miss the the unknown discovery at times. I don't know what they're going to do next because they literally could do anything. They could make up new characters. They could smush characters together. We're, we're probably going to get Goku, Goku fusion. Who knows where this is going? So there definitely is that part of me. It's like, all right, yeah, sure. Shit, man, let's go. What do you got for me? Yeah, anything goes. I mean, it's it's pure fan service in a way. And they basically take anything Dragon Ball that's ever existed and just say, yeah, sure, that's that's game. Yeah, let's do it. I feel like if I had liked that uh, 3DS game better, I would feel more positive about Heroes as a whole. <laughs> the game soured you on it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not ex- it's not exactly a fair comparison because it's just this crappy port of an arcade game. But still, it's like whenever I to this day, whenever I think of heroes, I think of endless rounds of trying to hit that button at the exact right se- oh, second God. as the meter fills up. I know. And every couple of weeks, I look over at the Japanese 3DS that Julian was so nice to bring me back from Japan. And Ultimate Mission is still in there, Ultimate Mission X. I'm like, yeah, let's play some Dragon Ball Heroes. I play one round. I'm like, you know what? Nope, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> So I guess that was our review, our overview, our recap, and our review of the first episode of the Super Dragon Ball Heroes promotional anime here at Kanzenju. Uh, again, we're going to have a, a full episode guide, every documentation thing you need to know that you probably didn't want to know or need to know about it is going to be up there on the site. So uh, look forward to that. The second episode is going to be hitting us July 16th. Second episode, Goku Goes Berserk, the Evil Science Rampage. So I think we will get uh, Cumber there. And yes, that is in fact his name. His name is his name is Cumber. <laughs> unencumbered with any previous story so who knows get it you, you know what yeah. I, I, mary and i were out to dinner today and we were looking at menus and there hasn't been an arugula character name i don't think and the way that i would do that name is i would drop off the first a the ah syllable and i would extend the last one and rugular i think that'd be a great sign name you heard it here first rugular anyway julian <laughs> What do you okay. got for me? Sorry, well, it was in my head. I had to get it out there. Well, it's also called Rocket in some parts of the world. So Really? That that could lend itself to something, yeah. Interesting. All right. Uh, Julian, what's up with you? What's what's going on on the site? What, what do you think? Um, How are you? So I've done, a, I've, I've done a, a big translation recently, which was the interview with Akio Ioku that I finally got around to doing. Um, I'm working on a couple of other things here and there as I find the time. Somehow I'm squeezing it in here and there, but I need more hours in the day. <laughs> Tell me about it. And also more sleep. That's that's my big fight is do I do I want to be rested tomorrow or do I want to do more work on my hobby and like uh bef- before I realize that my my decision's been taken away by <laughs> drowsiness. By nature. Yep. I hear you. All right, yeah. cool. Uh Jake uh Super Dragon Ball Heroes has kept you busy again over the last couple of days. What's up with you lately? I guess so. I've just been giving my um episode summary writing skills a uh, workout. I was going to say, it's been a while. After, yeah, after long months of disuse. And I guess that's it site-wise. Other than that, I've just been reading through um, all of Kinikuman, which has nothing to do with Dragon Ball, although... No, but if you want to talk about power levels... Yeah, that's where, that's where it all began. <laughs> so that's going to bring our episode here to a close, www.kanzenshuu.com. That is consenshu.com. I have been Mike. That was Julian. That was Jake. Uh, we'll have another episode for you in the very near future. I guess I, I forgot about it, but we have to do our mid-year prediction check. And actually, it was with you two. So uh, maybe we'll catch up with one or both of you for, for that and uh, try to pull Heath in as well. I know Heath is always game for the prediction episode. So look forward to that. Uh, uh, we're, we're definitely going to reconnect with Rich and get back to our review of Toyotara's Dragon Ball Super manga. Go back to the Universe 6 arc there and lots of other good plans in the future. Julian, I have I still have recorded episodes with you to get back to. Uh, that you and is I true. got to catch up on those Toriyama works and there's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> we shall do yeah, it. Yeah, I've been meaning to do that. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. I'm, 
archiving everything as we go. I have everything. Uh, we, we still have a few good decades left in us, right? Exactly. Yeah, sure. All right. So that was the site. Those are the people. That's what we got on deck for you. Uh, it was a lovely time chatting with everyone here. Lovely time uh, being along for maybe your commute or uh, your, your work or your work out, something like that. Glad to be uh, here for y'all. We will see you next time on the Konzenshu, the podcast. Uh, Julian, wrap it up. Thank you for listening to this episode of Konzenshu, the podcast. Catch you next time. Bye.